Hi all, this is Sean. So I thought today I'd make a follow-up review of the Citizen Nighthawk. I've had it for a little bit of time now and I wanted to go through the features, give you my view on the watch, briefly describe things like how you use the slide real bezel. I think that this might be quite useful. I'm not going to go through it in an exhaustive way because there's so much stuff you can do with it. But briefly I'm going to touch upon how you would use it and just really give my view. So I'm going to go in for a closer look and I hope you enjoy the review. So here's the watch in a more close up view of the dial. And basically I'm just going to first of all take you through the features of the watch. And then I'm going to give my view in terms of a review of the pros and cons of the features of the watch. And obviously tell me what you think in the comments. Do you like this watch? Have I missed anything out? Because particularly with the slide real bezel, to be honest, I'm a little bit unsure as yet about the minutiae of, of, of how to use the bezel. So hit me in the comments if you can give me any more useful tips on that because that would be really helpful. So in terms of the features, I'll briefly show you how to do division using the slide real bezel. But to be honest, I haven't been able to completely get my head around the other functions as yet. And every time I try to do it, it's wrong. So obviously I need a bit more training on that. So I'll provide the full tutorial just on the bezel when I've got to grips with it completely. Like I said in the previous video, apparently it is really useful and pilots will use this watch during their during their role. But there's so much that you can do with the bezel that I wouldn't like to do it at this service by pretending to know how to use it just yet. So we've got a date here at three o'clock. It's done quite well. Normal position of the crown, again at three o'clock. Then we've got another crown here, which is used for operating the slide, slide reel bezel. Then around about here, we've got the GMT scale, which as you can see, the yellow plane is indicating that we're in the afternoon at the moment. Obviously we would know that already, but we can offset this from the main time so we can tell a different time zone. I've got a bunch of different ways to do calculations around the dial and I'm going to briefly show you how to use that in a little bit and this this watch does have a lot of information on it but it's quite well designed so it doesn't actually detract from the readability of it I don't think but again hit me in the comments and tell me what you think whether it does so. So just to briefly show you the features of this watch so in order to operate the GMT and obviously the time function you pull out the crown once and if you can see if you turn the crown it moves the hour hand independently of the GMT function so just like on a GMT master or a, a true GMT in quotation marks it moves independent of the GMT you can see the GMT isn't moving if you turn the crown the other way you've actually got a quick set date which is great if you know the GMT Master 2 and other such GMTs mostly don't have a quick set date and you will set the date by you know filtering through the the hour hand this is different this does has have a quick set date it's actually a little bit of a pain in a way because if you go out by even one hour you've got to carry on round the, the dial and obviously there's 24 hours in a day so you've got to go round and, and also you, you can actually set the GMT and the hour hand kind of independently of the date change so I actually thought at one point the watch was broken because the date was changing when the GMT indicator said it was, it was morning but actually those things are set independently so you've got to make sure that you are actually in the afternoon in terms of the date change before you set the GMT to the afternoon, if, if that makes sense. Um, so the watch can be a little bit complicated to actually set. Hit me in the comments if you've got this watch and you think I'm being daft here, but that's what I found. I, I thought, oh God, is this broken? Because the date was changing when I cycled through and the GMT was saying it was morning but the date changed. So all I did was change the the time, on, like like so, 
um, where the GMT and the hour hand moved together. Made sure it was in the afternoon, then offset the hour hand compared to the GMT hand, if, if that makes sense. I, I might not be explaining myself very well, but it can be a little bit complicated to set and that, that's one of the, the disadvantages, if you like, of this watch because maybe that's why they don't put a quick set date on a GMT watch because obviously in this watch, if you turn the watch one way, if you turn the crown one way, sorry, you're turning the hour. If you turn the crown the other way, you turn the date. Obviously, and correct me if I'm wrong here, with the GMT Master, if you if you turn the hour hand one step too many, you can just turn it backwards and the hour hand will go backwards. But anyway, there is a, a there is a lot of information on this dial. So you've got the date, you've got the GMT, you've got the time. And I think that's really, really good. I mean, obviously I said it's a little bit complicated to set, but that's a really, really minor thing. Once you've got it set, it's got all the information you need. And it, it's not that difficult, you know, it's just a minor, minor gripe. And then you've got the slide reel bezel. So I've been reading up on how to use this, but essentially you've got a bunch of calculations that you can make all around the dial. And there are, there are absolutely tons of them. So I'll just take you through a couple that I've managed to get my head around. I'm by no means a mathematical genius. And I think to a certain extent, some of these calculations might just be easier to do in your head <laughs> or to use a calculator. I know um, I'm a teacher and you know students say that, why don't you just use a calculator? Um, but if you don't have a calculator and you know, you're a pilot, you're in the middle of the, um, you're above the Atlantic Ocean, you can't get a calculator, this could be really useful. Okay, so you can do a bunch of things with the slide rule bezel. One of the things, or three of the things you can do is multiplication, division, and you can calculate how long it might take to travel a certain distance knowing the speed that you'll be traveling. Okay, um, so first of all, division. Okay, division is, is quite easy, so you've got got the numbers that move around on the bezel and the numbers on the inside. So for example, if you want to divide, and I'll turn the watch around here. If you want to divide, okay, so say you wanted to divide 40 by 14. You put those two numbers together, as I've done so here. And then you would go to the origin, which is 10 here. So 40 divided by 14 is, and obviously you've got to count upwards, so it's 26, 27, 28, 28.4, so 2.84. So check that answer and it's 2.85, so it's correct to within a very, very small range. And obviously, you know, the markers are really, really small, so it's difficult to see. So that's how you do the vision. You mark up two numbers, that you want to divide, so say in this case 35 and 12, and you take it to the 10, and in that case it's 29, or 2.9, because obviously you've got to add a, a decimal place. So in terms of this watch and my view of it, as I've said, I paid 126 pounds for it on sale. That is very, very cheap, and I wouldn't expect to get it at that price necessarily, or maybe it will be available from that price from now on, you know, what do I know? But I think even at the retail price, which is £299, this is very good value, this watch. I think for a start, the features, there are just so many features that it's hard to knock it at this price point. It's 200 meter water resistant, it's got a date, it's got a GMT, it's almost 5,000 Gauss anti-magnetic. It's got a slide rule bezel, which is apparently really useful, though I'm too stupid to be able to use it just yet. And probably more features that I've, that I've forgot to mention. The eco drive movement, for example, will, will never need a battery and it's operated from light. So it's got that added kind of practicality. And I think I've found in terms of other Citizen watches that that's just a standard really for this price point. You know, you get quite a lot more features than you would expect and it punches way above its weight. I think in terms of another pro, it's a hardware in quartz watch that you can just 
you know, pull out your watch box and, and wear, and it will always be reliable. As I've said, that water resistance is really good because you don't have to think, oh, you know, shall I take it off if I'm going in the swimming pool in the summer? That's obviously when we <laughs> when we get on holiday in the future. Like another pro is the design of the watch. I think it's a really handsome watch. Some people would say the dial and all the information on the dial make it a little bit busy, but I think they've done it really well. They've kept the size just big enough so that all of the information does not get too muddied. But at the same time, it's not too big, so it's still wearable. So they've struck a really, really good balance there. There are various versions as well. This is the Blue Angels version. And so it's got the Blue Angels emblem on the back. Blue Angels is like a flying division in the US who do... Um, show flights and people can go and watch them i think another pro is just in terms of the the quality build of this watch so i can't really fault it in terms of its build quality for the price there's brushed and polished portions the bracelet is really good for the price the clasp's fairly nice you know it's it's not up there with a thousand pound two thousand pound watch but you know it's it's decent it is people have called this a teardrop construction because the links kind of stick out more than you would expect from a normal kind of oyster style bracelet and i can't stress enough really how wearable this watch is for the size so i'll put the specs up again even though i shared them in the last video i have quite a skinny wrist six and a quarter inches like very skinny I would say for, for a man's wrist and it fits me quite well obviously this is a it's a wrist shot watches always tend to look slightly bigger but it's just about not too big if that makes sense on me but they've managed to keep it really wearable for the size any bigger I wouldn't have been able to wear but this is just just right really any smaller, I think the dial would have, become, would have become too cluttered. So it's the perfect size, in my opinion. As I've said, they've done a really good job keeping this tasteful. It's really well designed, despite all of the information on the dial. In terms of cons, it's really difficult to come up with any cons, to be honest. One con that I can think of for some people would be the size. It's over 42. For someone with really skinny wrists, this might be too big. It might be too obtrusive. But like I said, for the size, it does wear really well. And at below 47 millimeters, the lug width, lug to lug width is, is really manageable. I was going to put the loom as one of the cons because I I thought that the loom is probably the, the least effective out of any of the Japanese watches, watches that I've owned so far. But having looked at the loom to do a loom shot i'll show you it on the screen i don't actually agree with my own assessment there so i'm going to take that away from the cons some people would say the busy dial you know it's a little bit too busy maybe and some people more mate and some people prefer more classic watches with minimalist detail but, you know, that's just a personal preference thing and you're getting into nitpicking there. For the price and the level of features and the sheer handsomeness, really, of this watch, I really don't think you can buy a better watch at this price point. I've been thinking about this a little bit, about Citizen and Seiko and about what sets them apart, really. And I think, for me... If I was to buy an automatic watch below about £500, I would struggle to come up with a better company to buy from than Seiko. They've got such a wide range. The quality is amazing. They make interesting designs. And I think it's the same for Citizen with Quartz. The Quartz watches are genuinely interesting watches. They're different. They don't try to be or they're not, they don't try to copy other companies. So that's what I would say for me, based on my relatively 
limited knowledge sets the two companies apart. So yeah, that's my Citizen Nighthawk. Like I said, I'll update you a little bit on the slide reel bezel when I get to know it a little bit better. But thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe. Tell me what you think of the watch in the comments. And thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.